Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today I made Eric watch Moon, the Duncan Jones film. Duncan Jones, I think his first film, or at least his first film that anybody knew about, who uh, most recently, of course, directed the Warcraft movie, uh, he did this, and Source he code, did yes. uh, another science fiction movie called Source Code that I like quite a bit. Uh, I don't know that it's quite as good as this. I don't think it's quite as, uh, as, as, as cohesive and... Um, and stuff, but it's but it's good. And then, um, and then of course he, he he's done the Warcraft movie, and now I guess we'll see where you his haven't seen. career goes. Yeah, but I did. and you know it just didn't seem like my bag. And then the more I heard about it, the more I was like, I don't know if I want to see a, a Duncan Jones movie. I'm liable to not like. It's cause interesting because he he's like one of my favorite directors, and I keep. I keep wanting him to do, uh, I, you know, projects that come up, like sci-fi projects that come up, where I'm like, oh, he'd be perfect for that, he'd be perfect for that, and I don't know if we'll ever see him go back to that to that world again. I hope so. Um, it's interesting because he didn't write this. Yeah, but he it's but, a but he story plotted by it. Greg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's unusual for a film to get. Usually, if it's a story by someone and someone else writes it, the other person also gets story credit. It will be like story by these two people, and that's written by one of those two. But he does write Warcraft. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. So I have no idea how, and I've never listened to the commentary on this. He does have a commentary. There are two. Yeah, but I would, uh, but I would love to know that, uh, like, like why exactly he ended up not actually scripting the dialogue when mm. when he's when he's credited for story. Because when when you have that kind of situation, I mean, it's like this in comics too a lot with with writers and artists where uh, you wonder like where one begins and the other ends. Mm. Uh, so like you know when when he's credited for story, like did he plot it beat for beat or is it a broad pitch or you know what exactly is mm -hmm. it? But or did he have like a three act thing like this is what's gonna happen at the beginning, this was happening in the middle, this was happening in the end. Now write it. Yeah. So this was a big deal to me when it came out because, and, and obviously the reason I'm having you watch it is because it's it's a movie I like a lot, and I really like Sam Rockwell. Yeah, and uh, and I thought you had seen it like at one time. I had not. I was kind of surprised that you missed it, and so I was like, well, you have to like. I think I think for science fiction fans, this is a much watch a must watch film. It's one of a couple of films Matt has always told me that I always need to see. It was this one, Sunshine. There's a couple of science fiction movies that, and you you didn't like Sunshine. I need to go back to it because I mean we're talking like a decade or more. Mm -hmm. No, we have more than that. So anyway, uh, but yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really care for that movie. That, that's a, that's a movie where I felt like it was kind of uneven and it couldn't decide if it wanted to be a horror film or not. Or or like I was enjoying it on like an awestruck kind of science fiction level, and then suddenly it becomes a horror movie. That's what I remember about it, but I haven't seen it in forever. Mm -hmm. So it might be one of those yeah, like Punisher situations where I go back to it and I'm like, what am I not talking about? This movie's fine, you know. So anyway, uh, the, so so. Uh, this movie was, as I said, kind of a big deal to me when it came out because we had a big dearth of traditional science fiction films right then. Mm -hmm. It was kind of interesting going back to it now because we've had a lot more movies like this since then, and I'd love to credit this, you know, for some of that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what uh, year does this come out? Uh, it's, I think it's '09. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's '09 or, or, or '10. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 2009. Um, and I didn't even know about it when it came out. Uh, somebody in my Star Trek club uh, told me about it, and uh, was like, uh, uh, "Captain Logan," because everybody calls me Captain Logan. You've got to go see this movie. The only thing I knew is starred Sam Rockwell, and that he finds himself on the moon. Yeah, but I didn't know. Oh, so you did know there was a clone? I didn't situation? know what he was. Okay, but could have been a robot. Could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but at some point, you know, the universe could have been anything. I yeah. was told that Sam Rockwell finds himself. It's like you need to see this movie. There's two Sam Rockwells. Neither of them dance, and that's disappointing. <laughs> Yeah, but they do every Sam Rockwell thing up to dancing, right? Because <laughs> uh, I always think of this as a really good Sam Rockwell performance where he's playing against type and he's not really doing a Sam Rockwell thing, but he does get to do a Sam Rockwell yeah, thing. Yeah, he does. Actually quite a bit, which is a little bit surprising and necessary because it provides some much-needed levity, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also helps that it makes him really human. Yeah. He's a really relatable... You... You can see and this movie. And a couple of relatable guys, right? You can, I mean, there, there, there's there's some real there, there's some real subtle but but important and noticeable differences between the two men because of the differences in their experiences. Yeah, you you can see a version of this movie where it's a real dry protagonist. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, like I'm sure we've made movies like. Well, that. and I kind of wonder if it was written with him in mind, or if there was any script tweaking when they knew who they who they had. Because mm. I could have seen, because I could see like an initial draft of something like this that is a little bit drier. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and obviously, it's got those uh, 2001 overtones. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so hard that it that it, that it, it easily it easily could have been looking at that you know so closely that it that it that it, it wasn't you know you know real fun movie. And I mean, I'm not calling this a fun movie, but it's got that levity. It it, it never feels it's got that personality. Yeah, it never feels like a slog or like uh, um. I, isolated is the wrong word because obviously it is isolated. It is about isolation, yeah. But, but, but we've all seen science fiction films that are legitimately good movies, but you're like, it's kind of a chore to sit through. Yeah, sure. Um, Sam Rockwell makes it so it's not a chore to sit through this kind of movie. Yeah, and I mean, it is deliber really deliberately paced and stuff, and it needs to be, but then you're right, if you had, if, if you had somebody without... Uh, that kind of personality, mm -hmm. um, it might be it might be a chore. You're absolutely and you, right. And you might still be like, "This is a really good movie," but it's not the most enjoyable. I'm it's glad I saw it, wine. but I don't know that I'd go put it back. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, like that kind of a thing. Um, but this is not that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so either. Obviously, um, you know, I, I love this movie. But anyway, so uh, real, real quick, basic plot synopsis. Uh, this is a, this is a wonderfully simple film, I think. Uh, it feels like a, like a Twilight Zone episode. It does. I was going to say that, uh, yeah. but in the in the best way. Like we we've seen movies where it's like. Uh, this this feels like a Twilight Zone episode. It should have been like a half hour long. Like this doesn't feel like it's not like mm -hmm. man. This really sh I really wish we had episodic science fiction anthology because this would be great for that. It's stretched a little bit. Well, and the big I, and you don't have that with the this. big difference is, and I think part of the reason that it uh, warrants a longer film as opposed to a short story uh, is that the O. Henry bit happens as your first act plot point. Mm -hmm. Uh, you would you would really expect that to be right at the end. Oh, he's been a clone the whole time. Okay, uh, no, that's the that that's the initial premise. They they peel the curtain back, and you know that, and then that's the impetus for the story. That's mm -hmm. uh, like 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 you have to know that right away, or you don't have a story. Um, you know, these two guys have to deal with each other. But anyway, so uh, the idea is that uh, we're we're sometime in the future. We're not given an exact timestamp, and um and it's a real ambiguous kind of future, especially given the fact that we don't go to Earth at all. And so we don't really know what Earth looks like, uh, and it could be we, ten years in the future. It could be sixty years. In the yeah, future. absolutely. I mean, it's got to be it's got to be more than ten, just because of the uh, amazing technologies they've got. Uh, That's and, true. And we'll talk about that because there's there's a uh, there's one there's one case in which I wonder if it's not a little bit inconsistently too futuristic and not futuristic enough. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. But anyway, um, so you've got uh, a, a a system now where uh, we get all the energy we need somehow from the moon. We're mining on the moon, and that gives us all the energy that we need to survive Something on, on to do Earth the sun. now. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it, we don't go it's into it real hard. It's a conceit, yeah. Uh, and, and, and I like that they, that, that it's not, that it's not, you know, mired in that. We don't, we don't mull about about that. But anyway, so, um, Sam Rockwell plays the lone human uh, that is working on the moon, and uh, not mining himself, but just kind of watching all the automated equipment. Like, there's, mm. there's a, 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 a there's a rover thing that you use uh, in order to uh, in in order to go out and make sure that everything is working right and mining things, but it, it seems like most of that's kind of done on its own. Mm. And uh, anyway, there's You're just kind of keep an eye on everything. Yeah, and uh, there's a machine that breaks down. And uh, he gets uh, hurt, and it seems like he's. Uh, he, it, at first, it seems like maybe he's even died, and uh, then he uh, wakes up, or who we think is him wakes up, and uh, we're told that there's going to be a group of astronauts from Earth coming up uh, from this 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 company, the Lunar Company, because um, I think that's important to mention uh, that that it's a uh, private company that's that's doing this. It's not a. Uh, it's it's not the government. And and um, there's obviously some some uh, social commentary about um, over corporate uh, corporatizing things. Mm. And anyway, uh, he seems to have woken up, but it turns out that he's uh, a second clone that's been woken up. And uh, he finds that out because he goes he he manages to uh, convince the, his uh, robot body to let him go back out to let him go outside. I guess in the first place, and um and and go find the uh, machine that 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 he was in, and uh, he discovers his own body. And uh, brings it back, and 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 that person is still alive. And it turns out that that's the guy that we've been following, or that we were following at the beginning. Uh, and I like the little details there, where uh, he wakes up, but he doesn't have the the, the hand burned. And mm -hmm. then uh, when we see the second guy, you know, he's got his he's got his hand burned. Oh wait, that's the guy we were following in the first place. Um, a lot of a lot of nice tells. Um, I, I think uh, I think the movie does a pretty good job of 
letting you know that something is amiss, but uh, but but where you can't exactly call what it is right away, but it doesn't like string you along and make a gimmick out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just you you're, you know something is up, but it doesn't it, but it doesn't make you wait forever to find that out. Mm -hmm. And then it's about uh, these two guys having to uh, figure out how to live together on the station and figure out uh, what exactly. Uh, uh, happen like like who they are, how in the world there are two of them, and uh, over the, the the course of time, they uh, over the course of the film, uh, they figure out how to get along, but they also um, do a lot of investigating, and they figure out what exactly the whole situation is, and uh, again, why there's two of them, what the whole cloning thing is, and uh, it turns out that neither of them are the original. Uh, did you call that? Did you make that assumption? When I first saw that, that was kind of an assumption I made. Yeah, I, that I, probably I, neither of them was the I original. I made that assumption. Something Sam. I want to look for yeah. is um, when he watches the footage of the ones that have gotten sent off before him, how many there are, because there can only be a max of five. Well, we, we know there's six. Because We know well, there are he's six. six. He's six, so we know there, there, there are probably seven. Yeah. That no. have been woken up. We know there's a there's a ton of them, you know, underground. Well, no, he's the sixth one that's been woken up. Well, the one at the end, I guess, is the seventh one that's woken up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. but he but but he's he's called in you know, a voiceover at the end uh, 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 the Sam Six. So um, unless that's ar an arbitrary number, like they're all numbered. Well, it's not because they last for three years. There's, there would have to be five to fifty. Yeah, I mean that number seemed to match up but to that, me. Yeah, I have questions about this movie, but fish sure, fish yeah. Lots of uh, but I mean that's that's pretty much it. And then, and then the idea uh, at the end is um, they want to figure out how at least one of them can go back to Earth and try to uh, live a life, even though. So they know um, that they that there's not a life to go back to. That the real Sam actually is on Earth, and uh, he's raising his daughter, and his wife has died. And we find out um, uh, really everything we need to know, I think, about that family dynamic. And uh, so they they uh, they wake up a clone. And they initially plan to kill it, but then they decide we're not murderers, we can't do that. Mm. And conveniently, one of them is dying, mm. uh, and it's the guy who was in the rover at the beginning. And oh, I don't he, think that's convenient. Um, well, I know. I just mean for their situation. Okay. I, I just, I just I, mean I like, mean. I just mean like for their situation, it's convenient that one of them is dying so that they don't have to murder anyone. And then, um, and and then he goes a, a, a ahead and uh, goes back in the rover and pretends to be the. Uh, well, actually, I guess it's kind of fun because he is the guy that was yeah, in the rover in the yeah, first place. Yeah. So, uh, so, so he pretends that he's been dead the whole time. And he, he goes, he goes out there and he dies. And he pretends he's been dead the whole time. And then the other guy uh, gets in a module and and uh, I, I get, sends himself back to Earth. And then. And uh, the third one wakes up, and uh, the robot that they have reset now and erased his memory um, pretends like, or, or, or is, is tells him that he is uh, that that he had a crash and he came back, and it's mm. it's the situation from the beginning. And when the guys come up, nothing seems to be amiss. Uh, but then we get um, a voiceover from like a radio personality at the end that tells us that there's uh, real briefly we get very little about it, but the idea is just that there's a shakeup now, and um, the 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 uh, the clone has been testifying, and that this whole setup is probably going to get shut down, and that's kind of that's kind of the sense that you're that you're given at the end. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, how do you feel about it? Um, it's great. I love it. Um, I have some questions. Sure. I wish there was more to the ending, or there was I do too. a sequel or something, because I, I have a lot I, of questions. I gotta say, I was actually disappointed this time with the ending in a way I never have been before. I think I've only seen this probably three or four times, as much as I like it. So, but um. I don't know if it's just like having seen so many more like like really classic type you know traditional science fiction films since then or what exactly it is like I think this was so novel I wasn't really being all that critical of it but but yeah like I I don't know that I wanted to go to Earth I kind of like that we don't but yeah I wanted to know okay, more certainly so, so so there's questions I have uh, the big one is about the original Sam what's going on with him is did he come up serve his three year term and then go back. Did he ever come up? Where, like, I, I don't fully understand. Why does it have to be this guy? I still understand why it's cheaper to just keep using clones as opposed to I people. Had, I had that too. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's an issue of it being cheaper so much as it is that you can kind of, like, it. My assumption is it's a job nobody wants to do. I think that's kind of that's kind of maybe the idea, okay. and so um, you 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 put you put those guys up there. Um, you I mean you you make you make these clones. They're your property. If one um, 
malfunctions or something, if he doesn't like it there, if it doesn't work out, you can just you can you can get rid of him, mm-hmm. and um and then and then bring another one up, and you're not the the worse for wear. I mean that that's that's the assumption. I mean, but you're right. I don't think it would be. I think it would be a very expensive, you know. Uh, under an inordinately expensive undertaking, yeah. Yeah, I just don't like like because that was my only assumption is that it must be cheaper to have clones. I'm like, but how would it be cheaper unless? Well, I guess you don't have to keep paying. You only have to pay one guy once. You don't have to keep paying someone every three years. Well, and I think that's part of the reason. Um, besides the fact that it's just good drama that we're at the the tail end of his time that's supposed to be served, where he's supposed to be done in two weeks. And am I am I right about this? The idea is that they're euthanized, right? Is is that like 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 when they're when they're put in that pod where they're where they're allegedly being being sent back to Earth? It's euthanasia, right? Well, and I get the impression that they have like uh, they can only last three years. Like they start breaking down, right? And that's why he gets sick. Yeah, that's why he gets sick because the other ones that we see are also sick. And they say that one wakes up every three years. And I and maybe the idea is supposed to be that he was because how I forget how exactly much time passes, but if the idea is that. See, this might be weird. Tell me if I'm right about this. The idea is supposed to be that he's there past how long he's supposed to be there, and now he's dying. That makes a lot of sense, but it would be weird if he was dying before he would go in the pod. Because you'd think that the idea would be, okay, um, they, they only last three years, and then they die. Well, but we he is put dying it in the, But we put it in the... Oh, is, is that is well, that brought up? That well, he's dying earlier than he's supposed to? He's two weeks. He's two weeks out, so the crash just happens two weeks earlier than he would have just started dying. So right. I think naturally he... Are you saying the crash perpetuates it somehow? I'm saying that the crash uh, jump starts it. So Oh, okay. I don't know how much that's... So, so normal... Well, because, because makes, they get sick, they have a contract for three years, my assumption would be uh, they start breaking down and then they have to be gotten rid of. He crashes two weeks before. Right. So he hasn't started breaking down yet, but he was going to do that. He would have been replaced soon anyway. Right. The point I'm trying to make, though, mm-hmm. is that you'd want to set it up so that they're healthy when you kill them. Why? Because it's more humane that way. That's the only reason you'd put them in the pod in the first place. Otherwise, you would just let them die a horrible, grueling death, right? Like, 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 like I thought the idea was supposed to be, we make you think that you're going to go to Earth, we put you in, in, in this pod, and we gas you or something. And I took it as just, that's just getting rid of them, and they don't, like, slowly die. Like, once they start getting sick, it's like, Okay, well, you've served your time. You're going okay, home. Maybe that. Maybe that's what it is. And you're right. Like, 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 it, it's it's a slow burn. The sickness, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it happens gradually. Mm-hmm. Um, but why not just time it in such a way where they're not getting sick anyway? They just think they're going home, and then, um, and then like like you kill them before they even start getting sick. Mm-hmm. But then, if somehow or rather they end up not going into the pod, they die anyway. Mm-hmm. And and then the question is, I mean, you're right. There's a lot of things we don't know. Um, I think the story is great. Like, I no, think it I works agree. Without, I agree. without that, and part of the reason that I'm asking all that, that we ask these questions is because we're so invested. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're supposed to ask those questions. I think it's fun, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. But I, but I think um, less people think that I'm criticizing it too much for that. But I, th- but I, but I think um, it's you got to ask the question: uh, Are they dying because it's a flaw in the cloning, or is it set up that way on purpose? Yeah, I, that I don't know. Because um, it seems like three years is maybe like the limit that at least this guy can deal with, and, and I and I think that's why because he probably, opened saying like three years is too long. Yeah, and that's part of the going. I say I think that 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 part at least part of the point of the cloning operation is this is a job nobody would want to do. And then the question is, well, why does it have to be complete isolation? If you just put one one or two other guys up there. Wouldn't it be easier for Send them to, to, to handle that? You know, because it's not like I, I mean, I like what what this movie has to say about the human condition and how we we're we're set up to live with other people. Mm. Uh, you know, we're a tribal species, but you got people not for this long, but you got people up on the international space station. We just put a few at a time. Mm. It's not just one person, but not for three years. I don't think. Uh, right? No, 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 that's true. But if you did have six, eight, twelve, four, three years, they probably wouldn't go crazy. Yeah. Um, my biggest, my biggest question as like an actual plot hole thing, yeah, um, is uh, the jammers. The jammers stop them from having live communication. Yeah, but we see live communication happen. Yeah, how? Uh, because we're told it's not in the stage. I guess they would have to turn them off from Earth, or the robot is capable of turning them off. But well, but they're they're out past the limit of the station because they make a big deal out of you can't do it from in the station. And that's why they go out looking for them. Yeah, that's a good question. And how would Earth know to... 
when to turn it off. Yeah, so to communicate... I don't well, fully the, understand Well, that. the question is, is it Gertie that contacts them, or do they contact Gertie? I would imagine it would have to be Gertie contacting them, because they would have no way to know. Because we only have... But that would help answer that question, if somehow, rather... Because there's an unreliable narrator question here, where we're like, is it is it really that the jammers... I uh, like 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 can't be turned off remotely like that, or is it that that's what he's that's what the robot tells him? Mm -hmm. uh, but at that point, he's kind of um, the robot's more on board. So mm -hmm. no, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, uh, one of the things I think is really impressive, and, and there's a lot of things that I think are implied but not stated, like things that are clearly there, but like it's a real um, active watching kind of movie. Yeah, right? yeah. So. Initially, I, I don't know if you had this when you first saw it, but like when he wakes up, my assumption is that the clone picks up from briefly before the previous one. Mm -hmm. And like I was confused for a little bit, like why doesn't he know this? And then uh, I realized, oh, it's him three years ago. Something happens early on, and he's, his, his, his mind has been reset to three years ago. And so you're seeing... And they were so different. And I was trying to figure out, like, why are they so different? And it's, he's really chilled out being on that station for three years. And this guy's at the beginning of that journey. Theoretically, they each do that. And they, they all chill out and become a little bit more zen, a little bit more calm. And they start with, like, an anger issue. Um, and they're a little bit more reactionary. And it's really interesting to see an actor play someone, the same character, like, at the beginning and end of a character arc. Yeah. Um, it's really impressive. And you're never, I mean... Obviously, there are physical tells because the the, the older one is, is beat up the entire time. But mm -hmm. like, you're never confused of which one's which. No, um, he does he does a great job of playing uh, the same character but different. Yeah, because I mean, they, again, they are different people in the sense that when you go through different things, it changes you. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the TNG episode Second Chances is all about. Mm -hmm. Frakes does a really good job with, with the same thing he's doing here, except that that's a more extreme situation because there's eight years in between. Mm -hmm. uh, this is harder, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, it's one guy, and that, and that actually is also about isolation, but the, but but this is one guy with, with just three years in between and not this, like, massively different situation. Well, and it's not going through two different lives necessarily as much as... Because, like, I think that the one we start with started the exact same way. Yeah, yeah, he did. <clears throat> like, he had the exact same experiences up to a point. But they become, there, there's more of a divergence that happens as they're influencing each mm -hmm. other. Because yeah. you wouldn't have had that. Yeah, yeah. But just as, like, a starting thing, I was, I was like, oh, that's... Like and we don't make that the that that the whole movie. It's it's not about like second chances is. It's not about a guy who uh, sees all these things in this other version that he that he hates about himself. It's not so much about that. Mm -mm. I mean, you're right. It, it it is it is very much the the take on 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 the um you know evil twin s scenario where um you are looking at the guy that is that is very much you, mm. but he's learned some things you haven't, mm. uh, and he and and he will have a different perspective certainly. Yeah. Um, no, I I, I I I think it's a wonderful little science fiction film. Um, I, I want to get back to what you were because um, I don't think I don't think we quite um, uh, explored this enough. Okay. The, the, the question you had about um, why that guy? Yeah. Uh, in the first place, because yeah. uh, you kind of asked two questions and we didn't really get to that. Yeah, yeah. And that's the more interesting of the two. Yeah. I think. Um, all, all you can do is kind of conjecture, right? Because uh, we don't know anything about him, mm. and uh, I mean, all we know about him is what we get for the personalities of these two guys. And I have to assume that the temper thing is probably in in, in him to, mm. you know, to some degree. I have to assume that he had skills that made him a good candidate. Mm. But is he to to your to your question? Um, and I'll rephrase it a little bit. Uh, my big thing is is it, did he uh, actually go there ever, like you said, or did he just volunteer himself as you know, almost like a sperm donor or something? Does he like, even know? Like that's a question I have. Does he know there are clones of him running around on the moon? Well, does he think he served his three years, came home? Assuming he did go to the moon, he served his three years, came home, and then somebody else is doing it. Well, now. two things, and I'll start at the end. That's a really interesting question because uh, with all the talk. Or all the with the little bit of talk that we get with the talk radio stuff at the end, you get the sense that it's not legal. Yes, yeah. You get the sense that I uh, this is going to be considered an inhumane 
I uh, I thing that's like that's like going against morality. You know, there's an, there's an there's a big ethical gray area here. So it could be that they stole his personality somehow, or it could be that he volunteered or even worked for them, and it was still not kosher. You know. Well, here's why I think he has to have been involved somehow, and it's the videos from his wife. Yeah, they would have had to have gotten those somehow. And I don't know if she's acting in those or if my my assumption is he did actually come up here for three years, Mine and they too, did yeah. have that interaction. Well, and then you have, and then here's the question: then it might not be the sixth clone; it might be the sixth time he was up there, mm -hmm. which means the first guy would be the first, so he could be just the fifth clone. Yeah, because 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 yeah. the, the, the real guy could have been there. And you're absolutely right. Like, in because when I first saw it, I thought maybe uh, it was an actress. Like and a Truman Show kind of a thing. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, 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 like a Truman Show kind of thing. And I, uh, and then we would like meet her at some point, and she'd be like, "Yeah, I've never met this guy, and I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, you know, doing, doing what I'm told." Uh, you, you are. Uh, it's kind of convenient. This is minor, but it's kind of convenient that um, he apparently uh, says things close enough to in, in uh, his messages that obviously can never get to her that her responses make sense as responses. Mm. Because she'll say things, we don't get a lot of it, but um, she'll say things, you know, she has one place where she's like, I miss you too. You know, suggesting that the last time he sent her a message, he said that. Oh, that's and that's a real assumption. vague thing, but there could be other things that are more specific. Mm -hmm. And and so you just have to kind of um, wonder, like, just uh, uh, how how carefully they cherry-picked them, and if that actually would make sense every time. It's convenient that we don't see more of them so that that can make more sense, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but, the, uh, but, but, the, but the other... Especially going near the end where we are. Yeah. Because um, you would think that would be a lot easier early on in who he is. Like, when he first wakes up, He's relatively the same guy, so the interactions would be you would think would be closer. But who he is at the end of that three years might you wouldn't necessarily think would always be exactly the same guy. No, 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 that could that could alter quite a bit, sure. Um, but I uh, but the other big question about uh, the original is if he wasn't up there, and the more we're talking about it, the more I think he had to have been. Um, you agree. make a great point about the wife, because if he wasn't. They could have implanted any memories they wanted to. Mm -hmm. it, we, we, he wouldn't. It wouldn't have to be. There's no reason. And we we mess this up sometimes in movies and TV shows about this kind of thing where um, we'll do implanted memories and we'll make it exact. We especially do this when we um, make do a do a duplicate of some kind of a main character in a show that we're that we're following. Mm -hmm. Where because it's a person we know. I'm being vague, but there, I've seen this a few times. Um, because it's the person we know, uh, they have to make it the same the, the memories from the same person, even though there's no reason it would have to be that mm -hmm. so unless they did that mm -hmm. so i think you're i think you're right i think i think he had to have been there yeah that's my assumption um so is it possible that the reason they came up with the cloning facility thing is because something happened with him and they didn't want to uh take the risk of it happening with another real person like like maybe, maybe there's this there, there there's some horrible accident that we don't know about. Or maybe whatever happens to him at the end of that three years is what happens to people. That's maybe it's being on the moon, exactly. not not being cloned. Well, but all the clones are sitting there in that in that tube, so I don't know. Well, maybe he was there longer than three years. Maybe. Well, but all the clones break down in three years. Well, sure, but that that would be a metaphor before it was anything. I mean, that, like, like, because because that seems like that's just either intentionally in their programming or or they or they they break down, you mm -hmm. know, where, where they couldn't make them last any longer than that. But let, let's talk about that. The cloning technology is real sophisticated. I mm -hmm. uh, this is this is one of those science fiction movies that watches hard sci-fi, and the more you watch it, you realize that it's not. And they and they, they do they do a, a great job of that where it's. It feels plausible enough. No, it's the classic sci-fi "what if" before it's really examining the science of this kind of thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's about the situation, which you know, I I am much more interested in. Certainly, As you know, it's about the psychology. Mm. But and I and I would I would uh, put this squarely in the psychological thriller category. Mm. But he, I, I, he is. Um, but he has the the exact memories of the guy from of, of the original guy, and I don't know how you do that like that. And and and, and that's the thing we, we do this in comics give all the time. We clones, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, or we either do that, or there are no memories. So I mean, the the thing is, the 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 uh, getting energy from the moon, as you can see. And having these clones that have the, the perfect memory, uh, being able to clone memory engrams or whatever, is also a conceit. Because, think about it, 
you have this uh, really sophisticated cloning technology in the same world where you have uh, pretty decent AI, but you can't even make it a humanoid. You know what I mean? Like, like, like they went out of their way to make their their um their future tech not look too fu futuristic because we're not too far into the future. But then you have this one incredible, impossibly incredibly great technology. Well, I I don't know about that because I think the I think humanoid thing can easily be gotten around with the. Uh the, the Uncanny Valley thing of, like, like you wouldn't want an android. And you wouldn't want something that looks a little too human, because I feel like... Okay, but it could have had a face that talked. Like, 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 like it just has the smiley face It just thing. seems utilitarian to me before it's you think? not advanced. Yeah, yeah, no, no that, that's what I thought was. That, it was sure. It's intentionally just utilitarian. Um, yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh, but the way that they react to each other does seem like clones are just a thing in this world. Yeah. People do just know about them. Um, that's a good point. Because uh, holy crap, clones! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great point. Uh, they're like, I guess okay. I have a clone. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, how I'll do go you? With, I'll go with that. How do you feel about the Spoilers. the way the artificial intelligence is handled? <clears throat> um, it surprises me because I have questions about that too. It's really sophisticated. Yeah, um, it's super advanced. It seems to kind of have a personality. Um, that can go against its programming, well, it theoretically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's the question. Is it's hard to tell how much and how often it's doing that. And again, I guess that's an interesting because it doesn't seem inconsistent. It's just it's just interesting to wonder about it because there's no way to to really know. Mm -hmm. And that's what's great about a story like this is that there's a lot of exposition that you can't be given, and so it's more interesting to to not to not get like it all makes sense. We just don't have all the answers. Well, you know? and, and there's an assumption you could make. It's been up here 15 years. <clears throat> theoretically, it probably hasn't like crashed or anything. So yeah. it's just kept moving on for 15 years, and maybe theoretically, inherently, you would start to develop some personality traits well, like, or something. Apparently, but it's not just personality traits; it's internal conflict. Yes, yeah. I yeah. mean, like, like, like. Well, it, it doesn't it, ever seem conflicted. No, it doesn't seem it, but that's because it's all internalized. Keep in mind that it 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 uh, keeps refusing to give him a straight answer about whether or not he's a clone until suddenly it just decides now I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no particular impetus for that except he's except that a Sam has figured it out far enough that I can't pretend like it's not the case anymore. But if he was programmed to keep continuing, if Robot Kevin Spacey was programmed to, to, to keep pretending that, regardless of logic, it would keep pretending that. It mm. stops doing that because it seems to actually really care about this person mm. and have and have empathy toward him, and then it gives him the code to get to get information um, that he's not supposed to have. Mm. Uh, and then at the end, uh, I, my big question is, uh, was the robot really prepared to help them commit murder? Because uh, its programming is uh, help the, the uh, uh, Sam at all costs. Like that. Like that. That's what. It, that's what it's supposed to do. But there's a third Sam. There are two Sams. He seems to care about both of them equally. Now, is it because he spent a lot of time with them, or is it just because that's his, that that's his internal programming? Um, it wakes up that clone, knowing what's going to happen, what they're what they're planning. Well, or you would have to know that. I don't think it does. Okay. Because all they say to him is, you have to wake him up or they'll kill both of us. I don't know if it knows the rest of the plan. That they're going to send one of them. Yeah. Her. Okay. So, so, then, so, then, so then the question is, would it have maybe gone along with it because it hasn't built feelings yet about the one that's unconscious? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. And again, I kind of like not knowing. There's some ambiguity here. Yeah, there's a lot of ambiguity in this film that I, I, I like. Um... And, and some of the stuff that I want answers about isn't a problem with the movie. It's just, I kind of want to know some of these things. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. I am back and forth about the ending the more I'm thinking about it, though. And this is the kind of movie... And I've seen. I don't lots need to know exactly what happens with him. Like I don't really need to know if like he goes to that house or... No. If he gets like a job or... No, but I have questions about... Uh, about the original Sam, and I, I have questions about the state of the world in that station. Um, but this is the thing that happens, I think, with a lot of movies like this, where it it has a great conceit, and this one doesn't have the thing that a lot of those movies have, which is you get to the third act, and you're like, okay, I have this great idea for a story, but I'm not end it. I just had a, I just had a concept. Yeah, we're building toward an ending the whole and time. And now something has to happen. This doesn't have that, but it is just that the actual ending itself, the last like minute, thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. we're just like, okay, but but then what? Like, not even then what? It's just I don't have all of the context. I'm 
I like now I, I have even but more then, questions. But then some of what I like about the movie is that lack of context. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to decide if that's really a problem. All yeah, I know sure. is how I feel. Mm -hmm. All I know is that I'm disappointed about some things I don't get to know at the end. But for it, it as a piece. Does it kind of need to do that? Because I don't know how you do that without going to Earth or without having too much... And the movie's much. not about any of that. It's just no. about these two guys. That's right. This one guy who was yeah, two Yeah, this people. one guy who's two people. But... Yeah, um, what happens to the third Sam when, when he inevitably finds out... Yeah, because because the last thing that, they, that he does before he leaves is he knocks down the Jammer Tower, so he now has live communication. That that new Sam will have But even if he didn't, there's a good chance that the company gets shut down and someone would come up and grab him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people down on the planet now know that there's a bunch of clones. What happens to all the clones? Like now, like now there's this big, um, you know, ethical consideration of, well, clearly there are people with you know, for lack of a better a better term, souls. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a whole movie with both of these guys. There's no question that they're not human beings mm -hmm. um, for in every way that matters. Well, and they say Gertie, like the, too. I he do says like we're people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think he's talking about Gertie when he says that, though. I think he's talking about the, the two of them, the clones. I don't but. think the clones woken up yet. Maybe I'm wrong. No, 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 that's later. Is it? I'm okay. pretty sure that's later. Okay. Because I, I had the same thought for a second, and then I checked myself and was like, I don't think that's what he's talking about, but I could be wrong. The context I got from that scene was he was talking about Gertie as well. I don't think so. Okay. And if if, if so, I don't know what how I, how I feel about them taking it that far. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's what it is. It shouldn't be, I don't think. But Well, I have a problem with it from his perspective. That Yeah, I do. But okay. I don't, I don't know. Okay. But anyway. Um, but yeah. I don't, I don't know uh, if there's anything else you want to talk about. Um, I don't think so. It's it's a really good movie. If you like science fiction, you should see it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a much watch. Yeah, watch absolutely, film. I agree. I really do. At some point, um, I will I won't do it for the very next thing, but at some point, I'll make you watch Source Code, mm. um, his his other film, uh, which is a different, which is a very different movie, but it's also a real real classic science fiction. But He's set on Jake but set on Earth this time, and, I, and you know it's, it's not funny a train, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I feel like I remember that from the trailers. Yeah, uh, it's it's a um, it's a causality loop movie. Mm. Um, I. Don't think of myself as a Jake Gyllenhaal fan, but every time I see a movie with him in it, I tend to really like it. I feel like he's one of those guys that's really good at picking projects, mm -hmm. especially thrillers and, and, and like horror films. He seems to be great at that stuff. Yeah, he did a movie with uh, Hugh Jackman that was, like, a few years ago that was just phenomenal. Oh, interesting. I liked him in uh, Love and Other Drugs. I, that movie Never had that. some issues, but I I, I I I liked it well enough. I'll see if I can figure because I, I can't remember the name. I've reviewed it. I uh, I mean I reviewed it when it came out years ago. Um, Brandon and I did did it, but uh, I might make you watch that when I go back and figure out what it's called. But at, anyway. at some point I'm gonna make you watch another Sam Rockwell movie, uh, Seven Psychopaths, which is really yeah. directed by the guy that did In Bruges. Oh, cool! Which was the film that, which was a film we watched when we were doing Netflix Relax. Back when we did Netflix Relax, that's yeah. right. Uh, you don't have to mention it yet, but do you know what your next movie is? Oh, I do. Yeah, cool. Because we're going into the Halloween season. Yeah, um, I'm going to Germany, and when I get back, we'll start the uh, Halloween movies. Yep. So uh, just like we did last year, we'll see if we can actually knock out two a piece this time. I don't. We did last time. Did, did, we, did we, we manage it? I think one what might have did dropped. I, like, what did I do that besides misery? What was guys? Poltergeist. Okay, we did. We did get through two. Yeah, then. yeah, we yeah. Both yeah. Got through two. Oh, no, I, I think our, because originally we both planned for three. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, because you were going to do Chucky. Let's and plan for two. I was going to do something else. But yeah. yeah, we've already given away what one of mine will be this time. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, although I almost would rather you could, show you, you could the, censor it there. That's okay. Beep. I would I would almost uh, rather show you the second one just because I know you have issues with eye things and that has the worst of those I've ever seen. Worst in ah, uh, it's a really good effect. It looks great. Uh, but anyway, th there's this whole thing at the, in the third act with the toy factory that's just mortifying. Uh, everybody, thanks as always for watching. We sure appreciate it. We will see you again next time when Eric makes me watch something. I'm so excited. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. See you, folks.